welcome to Lifestyle Solopreneur, the community for entrepreneurs who put lifestyle first. Join your host, Flavia Barris, as she interviews successful lifestyle solopreneurs and shares ideas to help you find the perfect balance between lifestyle, business, and self. Flavia is an attorney, marketing expert, and founder of several online academies. She's been featured in major media, including BBC World News, The Wall Street Journal, The New York Post, ESPN Television, and more. Join us for this episode of Lifestyle Solopreneur. Hey, Lifestyle Solopreneurs. Today we get to speak with Minister Michelle DeWitt, who was born in Charlotte, North Carolina. So she is a true Charlottean from day one. She's the only girl of five children. Her bachelor's degree was in theology and in pastoral. She is an author who's written an autobiography called I've Been There. She talks about some pretty horrific life events growing up uh, as a child, and also how God intervened and turned her upside down life back to right side up and standing. And also she talks about miracles that happen in her life. She is the CEO of Unbreakable Faith Incorporated, which is a nonprofit org that inspires others to embrace their truth and realize that they have a voice. She is no longer a victim. They are no longer victims. Everyone that she touches is a victor. She caters to both men, women, males, females, all ages. Her motto is your pain today will be your strength tomorrow. She also with her husband owns and operates a courier business that they have been operating for about five years. So they are entrepreneurs through and through. And it is such a pleasure to welcome you to the show. Thank you so much for having me. It is a wonderful and an honor to be on your show today. Well, I love how you have so many different facets to what you do and how you serve people because it is one thing to be involved in the nonprofit world, especially in faith, right? In ministry, there's that whole area. It's not exactly commerce, right? Because it's it's a nonprofit and it's in the area of faith, which, you know, is philosophy, religion, all of that. But then on the flip side, you and your husband also are entrepreneurs and you are involved in a business. Uh, It's a courier business. You would be our first guest that owns a courier business. So I want to hear about both. And I think listeners are going to be very interested. We have people, lots of listeners whose dream it is to start a nonprofit of some kind, something that they're very passionate that speaks to their soul. We also have a lot of listeners that love entrepreneurship and want to start a for-profit business, and you've done both. You've done both very well. So tell us a little bit about your journey and how you got to where you are now. Okay, well, let's start with the profit. So my husband and I, we both in July will be married 14 years. And one of his things, he was a police officer and I worked in the school system here in um, Charlotte. So we both love travel and going out to different places and enjoying looking at the the various places as far as across the country, around the world, things like that, that we have dreams that we want to do. So one of the things that my husband did, he started working with my cousin and just delivering furniture. And he fell in love with doing that. And so he moved forward into getting the DOT numbers. You have to have insurance to cover your vehicle. So you have to have that protector's insurance. And so we went through all the steps to make sure that we will qualify to go out and start a courier company. We both worked at Amazon for a little while in the afternoons and also a company called Lasership as well. And uh, we like the packing and delivering of the boxes. And so we were like, you know what? We can have our own business. So the business is called Bright Force Solutions. And we just basically deliver packages. Um, it could be auto parts. It could be pharmaceuticals. It could be, it just depends on the area or the corporation that's calling us. So we do have corporations that call and say, are you available? To go out and deliver at this time, they offer a price. Um, The price could be anywhere from $20 locally to $200 going up the street to uh, Raleigh. We don't go too far out of range because we are family knitted. 
And you have to have that time with your family. And, we're, you know, that's one thing that we both agreed on is that we would make sure that we would have everything together as far as being a family. That that was something that we wanted to make sure that we stuck to. Now, moving into having our own business, like I said, we both were still working in our areas. We just took the time to put the monies aside to build the business because we know that it takes some time, especially when you're trying to get all the documents together, make sure you do your checkoff list. There was a, a period that we were like feeling like we might have not chose the right avenue, if you will, <laughs> but we did. And it was just pushing, encouraging, being around the people that do the same thing that you do. And they give you avenues and let you know, like right now, there is a Facebook site that's out there. And they actually, it is a courier company, the companies that are a part of that site on Facebook. And so they give little nuggets as far as what they've learned or a new avenue to do something. So my husband and I, we worked together doing that. I enjoyed it for a moment, but <laughs> after time, I wanted to do my own thing, being a wife, being supportive. And that's something that I want to make sure that I did. And also learn it so that when there were times where grants, sometimes you can get um, grants to... Uh, to, to be a partnership with a organization such as the state. They may need someone to operate the rest stops that, you know, the rest stops around where we stop, you know, the rest stop. So they may need someone to come and do basic things at the rest stop, like just something basic, like the picking, getting trash and straightening up the restrooms or whatever, basically just getting the trash and to, taking care of that. Something simple like that. I know a lot of people are like, wow, you know, that's not really nothing big. And it's not. It's really not. And do you know they pay very well for you to do that and have a contract? Contracts sometimes last from six months up to a year. And then you have to go back and bid. A lot of bidding takes place with the government, the um, state. My husband is constantly bidding. You have to make sure when you do your bidding that you have all your ducks in a row because some companies want certain things like how much insurance do you have? The minimum you have to have at least the between, well, I won't say minimum. It has to be a hundred thousand up to $1 million worth of insurance. Um, that's to cover you and the product. So we have to make sure that's in place. And then they want to know what kind of vehicle you have. My husband and I, we use a courier van and just traveling back and forth with the courier van. You have to calculate all of your time, your money, the mileage, all of that great stuff has to be in order. And with that being done, there is a program that we use to actually keep up with all of that. I'm trying to remember because my husband, he goes on there more than I do to make sure that it's taken care of. So, yeah. But that's just about it. That's basically what we have. <laughs> well, that's not like, basically. I mean, that's a lot. It, it almost <laughs> sounds like you've got two or three full-time jobs, but I know you prioritize family time and you know, being with your loved ones. And so does this kind of career, does this having a business that you've created like this, do you still have flexibility in your own schedule or is the is the trick to just eventually delegate and hire other drivers versus doing it yourself like what are the challenges and how have you solved for those now yes that is the trick making sure you know once you start this um, business you want to make sure that you are learning as much as you can in order to basically get someone else to do the job to do the work and if someone else is doing the do it, you know, you want to train them all the steps and all of that great stuff. But there is a challenge with it. The challenge is who to hire and that process, because it is your company. You want to make sure that you have a great name. You don't want anyone to come on the job and not represent you well. 
what comes to mind for me when I hear all of this truly is just how many possibilities there are out there for somebody to get creative and just start a business that's going to fill a need and fill a niche. And it's almost worth it for anybody that wants to have their own business, but doesn't already have an idea of what they want to do to listen to people like you and, and you know, to explore and to go out there and, and see what the possibilities are. Because, you know, is your market very saturated or was it one where, because it's not at the top of a lot of people's list. So if you find like a list of 50 businesses to start, this might not even be on there because it's not as like commonly known as like a very viable business that you can start and operate and do well in. So I love that we're having this conversation because I think a lot of people out there are probably going, oh, wow, this, you know, this could work for me. And maybe I could do this over here where I live in Wyoming or Colorado or wherever they happen to be based because it's very geographically local. Yes. And I'm sure there's like room for a lot of people to jump into this kind of career. It is. It's a lot of room for people to jump in. There is so much work to be done. You, you it's, it's not enough. A uh, courier of vehicles or trucks to do the work is just so much. So uh, what I was saying about the employees as far as representing the business, we've had some people that jumped on board with us and they knew that they wanted to, at that moment, this is something that they wanted to do. And so we've had some people come in and we've done the training and then we're saying, okay, you're good to go. And here is the schedule. Here's the outline. This is going point A, point B. And then we get a call that they didn't show up on time or they didn't come at all. And so that means now with that, so that's the challenge with that. We have to make sure that we're available to go and make that run find out where the driver's at. One of the things that my husband and I looked into because of that situation is a tracker to put, make sure you have a tracker if they're using your vehicle um, to have the tracker on that vehicle so we'll know exactly where that person is. If they are wanting to use their own vehicle, they still would be covered under Bright Force Solutions Insurance. And we would ask them to make sure that they would have it on their phone so that we'll know where they are in case something happens, car break down, anything. And we can take care of that, call the, call the company, let them know that we're probably running an hour late, two hours, whatever. So that is a big challenge when you're starting with this business. My, my husband and I, we have really learned a lot from that standpoint. Family, Mm, I would tell anybody as far as family, you may be thinking, hey, I can get my sister to do this, my cousin, my brother. No, I say that because you don't want to interchange the two. You have a relationship, a family relationship. And if something doesn't go right on the job, you have to switch out of family mode and go into supervisor mode. And you need to be respected. And they may not, they may still look at you like, uh, we're family. You don't need to handle it this way. Let's do this. And so you can't do that. My husband and I learned the hard way. We hired our son to do some deliveries for us. And he was like, okay, no problem. I'm all for it. And then we find out later on that he had been late and that the, the uh, company didn't say anything when it, he initially had the first first time being late. They never said anything. They waited until it was like the third or fourth time. And we didn't know about it. And at that point, the company said, listen, you guys need to get a new driver or we're going to drop this contract. And we're like, whoa, wait a minute. So now it's like, we're talking to our son, what's going on? Why are you taking this? So it's just like, mom, dad, it's okay. I'm driving for them. No, it's bigger than that. And so we had to tell him, basically, you're fired. We're going to go with someone else. And of course, that's my son. I, you know, my husband and I, that's family. And we have to do that. So that I would say, be careful. I wouldn't choose family members. I just wouldn't do it. And make sure your criteria that you stick to it. Whoever you, uh, once you go through the training process with them, you want to be observant as to how they handle situations because 
my husband, when he went on the road with them, it would be three days on the road with him showing you and then three days on the road with him riding with you to make sure that you can handle dealing with delivering packages or going to the pharmacies and making sure that they're signing off on what you're bringing in, um, things of that nature. And so it can be very tricky, but at the same time, it's rewarding because you set your time. You can set your time. You can set how long you want to do. If you don't want to work on the weekends, you don't work on the weekends. If you're an early bird, hey, you can start at four in the morning and finish up at 12. If you stay up late, well, we know that there's drivers in the afternoons and they get done about 11 o'clock. I mean, it, it is rewarding in that aspect. And also the income that comes in from being a courier driver is a lot better than working a nine to five, a lot better. Well, I love everything that you've figured out and what you've done with your career. I love that you split your time between nonprofit ministry work, but also this very, I mean, it's business, it's business to business too, which is one of those areas. Well, I mean, it's hard to mix family with business, but when your clients are all businesses, it just brings a different level of professionalism to what you do. I would love to hear from you what you're working on now. If people want to connect with you and learn more about either your ministry or your business, where would they go and and where would we connect them to? Well, well, as far as the business portion of it, currently our, we would say, I would tell people when I talk with them in regards to the business to give us a call and they can call us at 704-765-9052. And what my husband will do is talk with the person to see which direction they're wanting to go. If they want to do this on their own, are they looking for, are they calling to to refer some people to us or um, learn more about that field? They definitely can call the 704-765-9052 number. Uh, As far as my organization, Unbreakable Faith, That organization, we basically deal with uh, youth and young adults, both male and females, that have gone through trauma, sexual trauma in their lives. And I deal with ages 12 up to 17 for the youth. The young adults are 18 to 22. With my organization, I'm very passionate about what I do. I want our young people and young adults to know that they have a voice. Now that you, that my organization, we do have a website. It's the initials for Unbreakable Faith. It's U-N-B-R-K-F-T-H dot com. And also the email address is the same except for at gmail, at gmail.com. And the number is 980-498-7297. For anyone that wants to reach out and learn more about predators, sex trafficking, sexual abuse, sex trauma, uh, we get into that. Our organization is a mentorship program where we take the youth that have been through that and we talk with them. We give them an environment to be free, to be open and have conversation. And we have fun with our organization as well. So, yeah. Anyone that would like to donate, we are more than happy to accept donations. We're getting ready for, I know school is just getting out in some places, but we are already preparing for a back to school bash for uh, the children. We're going to have a cycle club coming out and bicycle club and also a motorcycle club coming out. We're going to have cars out and we're going to have the some step groups coming. We're going to make it a big back to school bash. And so that's currently what we're working on now. So all the information is on my website as far as the, uh, what we're doing and where we're going. Well, thank you so much, Michelle, for sharing all of that with us. I know there's listeners who are interested in all the aspects and facets of what you do. You do a lot for a lot of people. And for that, I thank you. We all thank you and for your time today being on the show. Absolutely, no problem. I'm looking forward to several people getting out there and taking off. 
Guess what, lifestyle solopreneurs? If you don't yet have an online business earning you enough passive income to live the life of your dreams, I'd like to suggest you consider trying out Kajabi. Kajabi is an all-in-one solution where you can create and teach online courses, publish a paid newsletter, launch a free or paid podcast, process payments, build one-on-one coaching portals for your clients, and much, much more. I personally use Kajabi to power numerous successful and profitable online businesses. Lifestyle solopreneurs, there's a free trial of Kajabi waiting for you at this link, www.kfreetrial.com. You can try Kajabi for free, no obligation, by going to www.kfreetrial.com. Again, kfreetrial.com, and that K stands for Kajabi. Starting an online business helped me break free from that corporate grind, and I hope it does the same for you. You have nothing to lose and absolutely everything to gain. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Don't forget to subscribe to the show and see you next time.